I'm Nikki. I'm Kate. And this is our first look at the Mazda MX-30 EV, the very first electric vehicle that Mazda has made and sold for North America and Europe. Now, ordinarily, we would take the car somewhere nice and give you a chance to look at the car in all of its splendor. And then we'd take it out in another video and show you our opinions behind the wheel. However, this car has exactly a 100 mile EPA range from a 35.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. That is, as you might imagine, not a lot for a drive and test. So we're filming the walk around here and then we'll go out for a drive. Up front here, you have this very aggressive styling with these recessed lights. Mazda is very keen on their recessed lights. You see them across the range and here they do give it a very distinctive appearance. You have the Mazda badge here, which they say is a specific version for the EV, which is repeated elsewhere on the car in various colors, depending on your trim and color combination. Down here, you have the radar, which is pretty well integrated into the front and dynamically, it looks pretty good. The only thing that's really disappointing is that because it is based on a combustion car, you have this massive front hood and underneath it, well, let's have a look and see what's hiding under there. For those of you hoping for a front trunk underneath this cavernous bonnet, yeah, not good news. There is no front trunk. I would throw a USB stick in here to demonstrate that, but it would get lost in the cavernous void under here. There is plenty of space and had Mazda taken the time to package things carefully, then yeah, you could have had a front trunk. Instead, what you've got is what looks like a pile of noodles. It's just a tangled mess of pipework. It really feels like Mazda didn't take time to optimize the space under here. But there is an 80-ish kilowatt motor, but Mazda then later say it produces 107 kilowatts. So it's really unclear how powerful that is. Other than that, there's nothing else to see under here. It's just a little bit of disappointment. Over to Nikki at the side. Thanks, Kate. Now, Mazda has a thing for doing the suicide door setup. You know, where you have a regular normal opening door at the front and then kind of a half door at the back, most famously used in its RX-8 sports car. But for the MX-30 EV, your front door opens almost to 90 degrees, which means ingress and egress is really simple. At the back, put your hand on the latch, pull, and you have a B pillarless design. Essentially, if you want to get into the back of the car, you need to have the driver's door open or the front passenger door. And also the front seat passenger and or driver needs to take their seat belt off before you can then get back out again. Styling wise, the MX-30 EV looks very much like the CX-30 and there's a reason for that. They're basically the same car with a different drivetrain. And just in case you're forgetting you're driving an electric car, this electric label, it's literally just stuck on to the rear quarter panel. And I can't decide whether that is a really cool feature or just a real cop out because there's no electric badging anywhere else. One of the downsides to this design is this massive blind spot that you have right behind the driver and not great visibility at the rear either because of this roof line. That said, there is plenty of headroom in this car. One of the better headrooms of all of the EVs we've tested this year. Kate and I would love to give you the figures, but unfortunately, every Mazda press release we've seen that quotes any kind of figures is contradicted by another Mazda press release with a different set of figures. So let's just say you can easily fit people in the rear. I don't know if you'd want to do it for a long distance trip because of claustrophobia. On to Kate at the rear. Thanks, Nikki. 
At the back here, you get the eSky Active logo that tells you that this is Mazda's electric drivetrain. And then you have this very distinctive lamp cluster. The indicator and reversing lights are tiny. And although this looks okay at a distance, if you're close behind, it can be difficult to see these turn signals when they are flashing. Inside, you get a full 21 cubic feet. That's about 604 liters, according to Mazda. It doesn't really feel like it's that big compared to certain other vehicles, and I'm surprised at the dimensions that are given. It does have these nice little pulls on the back of the seat headrests at the rear, so that when the seats fold flat, they are less likely to foul on the seats in front when they fold down into that interior space. Then around at the side, you have this, arguably one of my least favorite features. This charging flap feels dreadful. It just, it's floppy and thin, and no part of my interaction with it has been pleasant. It is just really disappointing. Up on the underside of the trunk here is a button. It says that it locks the doors, which it seems to have done this time. However, on multiple attempts, it didn't do anything, and I still don't really understand what it's for. I guess if you're unloading the vehicle, you can press it, take your luggage, and shut the trunk. But otherwise, not great. Behind the wheel of the MX-30 EV, there's not a lot of space, especially with the driver's door closed. You feel a little cocooned in, and I couldn't figure out where I was supposed to put my elbows. The center console in the MX-30 EV is reasonably large, and the gear shifter feels nice under your hand. You put your thumb on the shift knob and then move down to select a gear, but it's possible to shift this car into neutral while you're driving just by trying to access the climate control screen. The issue that we have here is that the climate control screen is completely touch screen. It's not such a bad display, although the contrast is a bit iffy at nighttime. What I have a real issue with, though, is the center screen in this car. It's not touch screen. You have to use this little rotary knob, which is similar to BMW's old iDrive system. Entering an address has to be done one character at a time, not using a QWERTY keyboard, but rather using an old rotary style letter selector. In other words, there's no easy way to enter an address quickly in this car. The steering wheel is just the right size for a car of this proportion, but the paddle shifters feel a little bit cheap. And I should note that the paddle shifters are used to select the amount of regenerative braking that you want when you lift off the accelerator. There's no other special gear. You can't select an eco mode and there's no sport mode, certainly not with a limited amount of power available to this car. The controls for the lights and the wipers are within easy reach, but again, they're not the nicest out there. This high-end version of the MX-30 also has a head-up display, which is nice and bright, but it's nowhere near the fancy head-up display we recently saw in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. That was particularly special. This version of the MX-30 has a fully electronically adjustable driver's seat, but the passenger seat is completely manual. And this particular version of the MX-30 has two different memory presets which is a nice touch. But I've got to say the adjustment in lumbar is not my favorite here. And the seat doesn't feel particularly comfortable or well padded on long trips. Not that you're gonna be making long trips in this car as we'll explain a little later on. In terms of the quality of the materials, this is one of the better quality interiors we've seen from a supposed budget oriented EV. The problem is, this is an interior I'd like to see on a $20,000 car and not a $36,000 car with a 100 mile range. Further back 
from the gear selector, we have this rather interesting cork covered covers. You basically flip up the cork covers and there's space there to put a drink. Not a very big drink, I'll add, but space nevertheless. And the armrest slides back and forth to give you the best position. For my taste, though, the armrest is a bit low and is probably better suited for passenger use than driver use. That recycled cork idea continues around the base of the centre console and into the lower coin tray. It's nice to have everything recycled. The cork is recycled material, as is the felt on the door. But honestly, this just feels too much of a fussy centre console and interior for my liking. I think it's going to be very difficult to keep clean, especially around all the curves and different shapes that exist between the top and the bottom level of what is essentially a flying buttress style centre console. And really, who needs a touchscreen climate control? I think it would be a lot easier to just have regular old buttons there. Another feature worth noting is that the MX-30 has followed in the tyre tracks of many EVs on the market today in offering a mains inverter built into the car. Unlike many cars on the market, which normally opt for somewhere around the kilowatt mark, the inverter in the MX-30 can, wait for it, supply you with a maximum of 150 watts at 120 volts AC. That's about enough to charge your laptop or maybe a small rice cooker. If you have a particularly tall driver in the front, riding in the back is going to be extremely unpleasant. I'm currently kneeing whoever is sitting up front in the back. The driver's side rear seat passenger can make adjustments to the front seat using electronic controls located on the rear of the seat. Don't worry, they do lock out while you're driving. The front seat passenger, meanwhile, has a manual seat. So if you want to make adjustments to get in and out of the car on that side, you have to use the manual pull that's located down near the seat rails. Sitting in the back, there's just about enough headroom to be comfortable. Actually a little bit less than I would have hoped, but not bad considering the number of cars we've sat in this year where I've not actually been able to keep my head straight. In terms of claustrophobia though, it's really pretty claustrophobic in here. This window does not roll down. I feel like I'm in a goldfish bowl. Let me out. That's it for a very brief look of the Mazda MX-30 EV on a very hot day. Thank you to Mazda for helping us get this car for a few days. And look, it's even got a tail wag. Yeah. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. And if you really liked it, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go out to everyone who makes this channel possible. That includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those who just watch and share our content. And if you are a supporter at the charged up level, you'll see your name right here on our right. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Mira Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Trajota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Jim Burness, Chris Ascentar, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde, and of course, out of this world, thanks to our Starman level supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reedar, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and of course, Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Kofi or buying something cool from our cool swag store. Like this t-shirt, but minus the SPF 50. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference to our ad revenue. Thanks for joining us. And as always, keep evolving. Oh.